I was jarred awake by what sounded like a doorknob jingling. Rolling over, I noticed the clock read 3.23 a.m. Still very groggy, I trudged my way to the living room of my tiny apartment and slipped on a pair of sweatpants that had been hanging over the back of the couch. The jingling continued as I wiped the sleep from my eyes. My apartment building wasn't exactly in a stand-up part of town. In fact, to say we had our share of crimes would be something like the understatement of the century. But when you deliver pizzas for a living, you can't really expect the Ritz-Carlton. Suffice it to say, some junkie mistaking my room for his wasn't outside the realm of possibility. Without even bothering to check the peephole, I called to whoever was at the door. Wrong apartment, man. This is 4D, I said, my throat still dry. The doorknob stopped rattling for a minute and I shook my head and sighed. Just as I turned around to head back to bed, it started back up, only more aggressive. I seriously doubted someone was trying to break in, especially after hearing that I was home, but again, this was a shitty neighborhood. Groaning, I made my way to the door and beat on it as the handle shook. Again, I called out more aggressively this time. Dude, wrong apartment, fuck off! The person on the other side ignored me and kept trying the knob. It was when I finally decided to look through the peephole that things got... odd. There was nobody there. And to make things weirder, the doorknob stopped jiggling as long as I was peering through it. But the rattling continued with greater intensity a few seconds after I pulled away. Confused, and becoming more agitated with each passing second, I resolved to just whip the door open and, hopefully, scare off anyone trying to fuck with me, which is what I was starting to suspect. I took a deep breath and gripped the aluminum bat I kept by the door, but never used. The wrapped handle fit into my grip perfectly. I undid the chain, turned the deadbolt, and with a sharp inhale I ripped the door open and stood as if ready to crack the offender's head open. The door smacked into the rubber bumper on the wall and my eyes scanned the hallway. It was empty. But how? Right up to the instant I gripped the doorknob from my side, somebody had been trying to turn it from the outside. I just stood there, looking like a nut bar as I searched for any sign of life, to no avail. I muttered to myself and paced out into the hall. Listening, I realized that the whole building, or at least the whole fourth floor, was dead silent. None of the usual sounds of loud rap music or arguments. No laughing, raucous sexcapades, or crying children. I couldn't even hear the cars in the street below. Not to say that this was somehow terrifying or spooky, but it gave the long hallway an unnerving, overlook hotel kind of vibe. Like any minute, two creepy twins would show up wanting me to come play with them. I laughed it off and lowered my back. Whoever had been was gone now. I headed inside, reset the locks, and sat down in my bed. I stretched, let out a deep yawn, and fell backwards onto the mattress. No sooner than my eyelids had closed, the doorknob started up again. Only now, it was joined by a light knocking. I jumped a little at first, but then my annoyance had turned to anger. It was the middle of the night and I was trying to sleep. I shot up in bed and stomped my way back to the living room. Get the fuck away from my door, I shouted, this time putting some bass in my voice. The nuisance continued until I slammed my hand against the door and stared out of the peephole again. I had expected some strung out loser or even some kids just being assholes. I had not been expecting her. It was a woman. She was mostly backlit, but from what I could tell, she was thin, almost malnourished and young, maybe mid-twenties? She seemed sickly, but that could have been the lighting, I thought. Her head was lowered and her pale blonde hair rained down, obscuring her face. It looked like she was wearing a white silk nightgown or robe, which seemed appropriate given the hour. I couldn't seem to place her though. I didn't remember ever seeing her in the halls or the laundry room, and there hadn't been any moving vans out front in a few months. Her parents had caught me off guard and all the anger and annoyance had left my body. Hello? She whispered in a voice so low that it took me a second to even realize I had heard it. Hello? Could you open the door, please? I was dumbstruck. 
Was this woman really the one who had been screwing with me? She didn't look the type. I need you to open the door, she whispered. Please let me inside. She knocked slowly between speaking. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? I couldn't bring myself to just open the door for her. Something about the way she just appeared out of nowhere set me on edge. And if she really needed help, why all the messing around? Everything will be fine, Nathan. Her tone sounded almost maternal, as if she was soothing a child having a nightmare. But how did she know my name? I was fairly certain I had never met this woman before, though she did seem familiar somehow. I brought my eye away from the peephole and rubbed my head. I'm sorry, do we know each other? Do you need me to call the police or something? I struggled with myself. I mean... If she needed help, who was I to keep her locked out in the hallway? For whatever reason, though, something in me knew I shouldn't. Of course I know you, Nathan. Now please. She paused for a moment. Open the door. As unsettling as the whole situation was, I felt my anger rising back up in me. Just who the hell did this chick think she was to come here and harass me in the middle of the night? And claiming she knew me? I gripped the bat again, more for moral support than anything, and undid the deadbolt. I could hear her murmuring something, but it was too quiet to make out. I left the chain on, though, in case she decided to make a move. Look, lady, I started, yanking the door open, but was cut short at what I saw through the open space. Nothing. Again. As if the woman had never been there to begin with. The hallway was as void of life as it was before. Slowly, I closed the door and stood silently in the darkness of my living room. My mind struggled to make sense of what was happening. I must have been dreaming. There was no other way to piece it all together. Just a really strange, unnaturally vivid dream. I turned and slouched to the floor with my back against the cold wood of the front door. Letting out a deep sigh, I tried to force myself to wake up, but to no avail. I pinched myself, shook my head, and even punched out at the end table sitting nearby. I cursed softly as my hand throbbed, hanging my head in defeat. Fine. I resolved to wait there, keeping guard until morning. I could feel my eyelids getting heavy, the excitement of the night wearing thin and leaving my body feeling drained. No matter how hard I fought it, the Sandman's clutches pulled me steadily into an exhausted sleep. Knocking. I snapped awake and jumped to my feet. Knock. 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 I did a quick 180 and gathered my bearings. Strangely, the knocks hadn't come from my front door. They came slower, more deliberate as if beckoning me to investigate. Knock. 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 I followed the sound to the pantry door on the far side of the kitchen. Sure enough, the knocks were coming from inside. A chill rolled down my spine as I reached my hand out to the knob. My fingers were so stiff with anxiety, or maybe stone-cold fear at that point, that closing my fist around the handle took everything I had. Even as I stood there, knuckles white with strain, the knocking came again. Knock. 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 Who, who's there? I stammered the question, wishing I could have been more stern. No response came. Seconds passed. Then a minute. Five. I couldn't take it anymore. My heart had worked its way into my throat and was pounding out an intense beat. Every primal instinct I had was screaming, Run! Don't do it! Just go back to bed and hide under the covers. It'll all go away when the sun comes up. But I couldn't help myself. I had to know. I shuddered a breath and closed my eyes before ripping the pantry door open. Standing in the kitchen, the tile cool against my feet, I kept my eyes squeezed tightly shut for easily the longest moment of my life. Cold sweat chilled my back and my blood pressure had to have been through the roof with anticipation. I opened one eye, then the other. 
scanning the space before me frantically for something, anything to show me I wasn't imagining this. But again, nothing. Suddenly, the bathroom door handle began jiggling, while someone knocked aggressively from the other room. Knock, knock, knock! Faster and harder the beats came. The door sounded as if it would burst from its hinges. I ran to the bathroom high on fear and adrenaline and gripped the door handle. As soon as my clammy fist closed around the knob, the front door began rattling and the knocking continued as if never interrupted. I whipped around and again raced to the living room door. Before I could cross the threshold, the closet started in. Then the pantry again, followed by the cupboards, cabinets, and even the walls. Knock, 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 knock! The sound was deafening now. It was as if it came from inside my head. I couldn't see. I couldn't breathe. The room around me felt like it was collapsing in on itself. I dropped to my knees and screamed, tears rolling down my face. I buried my head in my hands and sobbed and screamed, begging for mercy until my throat was hoarse. At the pinnacle, when I could feel the fragile stitching on my mind coming undone, when I couldn't bear it for another second more, it all stopped. The knocking, the rattling, everything became chillingly still. Sitting there in the shivering heap on the floor, my head still pressed firmly into the carpet. I let out a soft laugh, but my victory over this nightmare was short-lived. Hello, Nathan. Her voice cut through the silence like a knife and pierced depths of my being I didn't even know existed. Police found the body of Nathan Cartwright the following morning. Neighbors had made several calls throughout the night to report sounds of screaming and crying. Upon investigation of the apartment, police discovered no signs of forced entry or struggle. Medical examiners could not come to a definite conclusion as to the cause of death. He showed no signs of illness or pre-existing conditions. Autopsy showed no signs of internal complications. It was as if Nathan Cartwright simply stopped living all at once.